are back here on This is the Day, and joining us now is Caroline Brennan of Catholic Relief Services, and she just has come back from recent trips to Iraq, Gaza, and Syria. And thank you so much for being with us, Caroline. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here. Great to have you in the living room. <laughs> thank you. And uh, if you could just maybe tell us a little bit about, uh, well, first of all, your work, um, and uh, you focus more on the humanitarian response as well, but uh, and then uh, some of your recent trips. Sure. I, um, I work with Catholic Relief Services Emergency Response Team, which in times of crisis, if it's a natural disaster like a catastrophe, um, like a, an earthquake or a tsunami, um, we'll go out and support the country program on the ground or a man-made crisis like we're seeing in the Middle East in Iraq and in Syria. And typically we have country programs that are already working in these areas, helping people overcome poverty, um, improve their health, their education, their lifestyles in some way. And when an emergency happens, they're adapting their program to respond to those needs. And I'll go out to support in a communications uh, function. And typically that involves interviewing those who are affected um, wherever they're living, if it's in a tent or in the open air, and capturing their story for the purposes of bringing it back home to, American, uh, to Americans who are so concerned about these issues or might want to be involved in, in some way, whatever way fits their life. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, the, the, I'm sure the media helps you, you know, like television, video is very powerful, but still images are, are incredibly powerful. When, when, when a, a situation or, or, or a human face is captured, I'm thinking of this, this picture by Haure Khalid that mm -hmm. was retweeted many, many, many times tweeted originally by the Pope. Can you tell us about the how media helps you? It is critical. Media can be the difference between life and death for so many people because without a spotlight in so many parts of our world where there's immense poverty, where there's a, an extraordinary crisis of some sort, if you don't have a safety net or a helping hand to help you recover, to stand up, to start to rebuild, you can literally um, lose all of your options, all of your assets for the next generation. And uh, when you talk with people, like speaking with Syrian refugees in Lebanon, when they describe what they have lost, they are not typically talking about their home or even a family member. They are talking about this loss in their identity of who they are because what has become of their lives is not something they planned for. They, it was out of control so often um, as the case for so many people. And you have this deep sense uh, of loss in, in what they thought their lives would be and what control they have. And so for people to go through something without anyone knowing, um, to have your fate um, in the hands of um, a disaster that's come across or perhaps civil strife, for no one to know you're in that situation is truly terrifying. And so Spotlight really is enormously helpful in getting attention, but ex extraordinarily important for getting help. Um. As you say, you were meeting a lot of refugees on your trips too. So what, is, what are some of the more immediate needs that you find, uh, you know, for, for, I guess for the refugees that you're, you're dealing with, what, what are they looking for? Really you have sort of two main areas of importance and need. You are, you're helping people survive from the day to day. So in these immediate days after a, a crisis or in the moments of something befalling a community of some sort, People need things that you and I might have already used today in some way. They blanket to sleep under, a roof overhead, things to cook with, to eat with, clothing, diapers, soap, buckets, ways to stay clean. So those immediate needs are so important just to prevent further disease, to help get by from one day to the next. But we are constantly mindful of people's ability to fully recover. We don't just go in and leave when the cameras are gone. We are really helping and working with communities to have the skills and the opportunity to rebuild not only the infrastructure uh, that might have been destroyed, but their lives so that they're fuller and richer than possibly they were before. And so in the case of the Philippines, one year after Typhoon Haiyan, that anniversary is coming up, um, you'll see houses being built by Filipinos. You're seeing schools being rebuilt and farmers going back to work and fishermen uh, going back to work. And it's that full recovery, that resilience that we're constantly mindful of even early in the days of a response. And how quickly we forget you know, these incidents because they, they drop out of the, uh, the commercial media and right. we move on. Uh, I, I just want to talk about the word Catholic in the name of the organization, Catholic Relief Services, because Pope Francis has encouraged us to, to really go out to the peripheries and to encounter people, especially those mm -hmm. who live on the fringe, the edge. Um, how important it is, is it in this moment 
that there be, among all the many relief organizations, that there be a Catholic relief services. It is so incredible. I think so many Catholics across this country and around the world would be so proud of the presence of the Catholic Church in so many of these countries where there is a tiny Christian or Catholic population, and yet the Catholic Church is on the front lines in South Sudan, in Jordan, in Lebanon, in all of these places where, again, Christians might be the minority, but the Catholic Church is leading the humanitarian effort. And I met a Syrian girl, a child, in one of the school programs being uh, managed by the Catholic Church in Jordan. And she was a Sunni Muslim girl. She was about seven years old. And she actually thought the word Catholic meant help because of her association with the Catholic Church. And um, you just can only hope that the impression that this makes in people's lives during their darkest times will last, you know, in a future time as these children go up, that they'll remember what they went through and they'll remember the kindness and the love and the embrace they received from Catholics and people near and far. Um, I think the presence is something to be extremely proud of. Mm. We just have about a minute left, but uh, you know, just from your experience too, how has this affected you? You're, you're out there, you're, you're able to interview people who have just been through some humanitarian crisis and stuff. What's, what's it been like for you to be able to do that? It, uh, I feel so privileged, honestly. I feel so fortunate just to be able to have conversations with people who live in circumstances so far from my background and my, my childhood, and just to be able to have conversations in these places. You know, as people, especially women, you know, we speak a common language um, and people just around the world, when you're talking with mothers and fathers, um, teachers, um, we all want the same things and you hear it echoed in what they say. Um, everybody wants to leave a legacy, to have a better future for their children, and it's reinforced time and again, no matter the backdrop. Thank you so much. Thank you.